as far as taking money for preaching Islam can be divided into two broad categories. One is being an employee of a DAWA organization where you're a full-time paid employee and they're giving you salary. As far as this is concerned, Alhamdulillah, working for a DAWA organization as compared to non-DAWA organization which are halal, it is mustahab. If you're working for a DAWA organization, it's mustahab. Only thing you should take care that the salary you're drawing should be what is your market value. If you're taking a salary which is the market value for your ability, for the work that you're providing to that Islamic organization, it is perfectly fine. Either market value or less than that. But if you demand more than the market value, what is the market value, then it is it is not mustahab. So my reply that though it is permissible, it is preferable to work for a DAWA organization as compared to working for any non-Islamic organization which is halal. They may be dealing in biscuits or halal products, but it is not related with Islam, so it is preferable to work for an Islamic DAWA organization as long as the salary you're drawing should be what is worth of your time you're giving. As far as my organization was concerned in Bombay, Alhamdulillah, we always had a policy that whenever we employed anyone, any Muslim, into organization, we used to see what was his salary in the previous organization or previous company. And as a policy, almost all the times, we always gave 20% or 25% more than what he used to draw outside. So that our philosophy was that at least we take care of our Muslim brothers and sisters and inshallah they will give a better output to us so they get both dunya as well as the akhirah. This was our philosophy. The caution to be taken is that many Muslim dais, they start organizations and they are the head of the organization, they may be the president or the chairman and there are few employees and they decide the salary for the other employees and they decide salary for themselves also. If you are the Amir of your organization and you are giving salary to yourself, this is very critical. For you to decide what is your salary, you have to be very careful. If you yourself being an Amir take much more than what you really deserve, then it is not advisable and it is not mustahab. So always I tell my students and when I give dawah talks that if you are the head of the organization and if you are taking the decision what should be the salary and if you decide salary for yourself you have to be careful that if you decide for yourself more than what you deserve then your sawab would be reduced in the akhirah. As far as the other employees are concerned your boss is giving you salary and uh, Uh, your boss is the one who is deciding and if he gives you more than what you deserve, Alhamdulillah, as long as you are not demanding, he is giving you more than what you deserve, there is no problem at all. As a policy, as I told you, that we used to give more than what the market value is, so that our employees are happy and they are satisfied. The second category is that when a dai, when he is going for a lecture, and someone invites him and he demands money for giving lecture, for preaching Islam. This, a person has to be careful. There are two types of culture, that is one is the Eastern culture and one is the Western culture. Where I come from, India, and I started Dawa in the mid-90s, and if someone offered me money to give lecture, it would be like an insult to me. I am doing for sake of Allah, and how come they are offering me money? It would be like an insult. But in the Western world, because of the Western culture being influenced by the Western philosophy of, you know, everything is weighed in money, unfortunately, even many of the Islamic organizations get carried away by the Western culture and they start demanding money and they start demanding much more than what they deserve. This, you have to be careful. And this Western culture slowly, slowly has spread to almost all the countries of the world. Previously where it was out of the question that anyone 
asking for money for giving Islamic lectures in India, Pakistan. But slowly, slowly, yes, someone gave voluntary, no problem. But slowly, slowly, the culture of the West has percolated into the Indian subcontinent, into the east part of the world. And now we find that even here, many of the Da'is have started demanding. Demanding what you're actually worth or an amount which will take care of family on a lower level is no problem. But demanding something much more and adding to it that I want this facility, I want a business class ticket, I want a first class air ticket, I want to stay in a five star hotel and so much requirement is that this is not advisable and it's not encouraged. But unfortunately today we find in the western world more than 95% according to me of the Dais they demand a money that if the money is not given they will not come and that's a very sad story. There are very few Dais who may not be demanding money and this culture has even come to the eastern part of the world and now we find even in the eastern part of the world in India, Pakistan we find the Dais if not all then more than three fourths at least 75 percent the demand which is not a good sign. If someone is voluntarily giving you some money for giving a talk and you take it whatever they give that's the best alhamdulillah. If you demand what the minimum required you say that okay you pay for my air ticket pay for my simple accommodation no problem but demanding I want a five star I want a business class ticket this is not mustahab and it's not to be encouraged and unfortunately nowadays giving lectures has on giving lectures and asking for money has become a business which i feel is not encouraged in islam asking what is required or minimum level no problem i always say that it is preferable you don't take money it is mustahab as far as i'm concerned alhamdulillah I've been doing dawah for the last more than 30 years. MashaAllah, Allah's help has been there, Allah's grace has been there, and Allah's mercy has been there. That Alhamdulillah, out of the thousands of lectures that I've given, you know, a few thousand lectures in different parts of the world, never ever have I demanded or taken money for a single lecture. Alhamdulillah, Allah's grace. And whenever someone calls me for a lecture tour, I have my criteria. Number one is that I will pay for my own air ticket to and fro. Number two, I will pay for my whole, I will pay for my own hotel accommodation, lodging and boarding. I only say that you have to arrange for my visa. These are my conditions. But naturally, when we go, the organization they already booked the hotel in advance and if they don't allow me to pay, I cannot force them. But as far as the air ticket is concerned, Alhamdulillah, always I make it a point that I pay it from my own pocket except if it's an invitation from the head of states or on a government level where it's difficult to argue with them there are few cases that these are the only occasions that i don't force them otherwise any even a top businessman calls me even even a billionaire calls me as far as the to and fro air ticket is concerned alhamdulillah i always pay and that is much more expensive than the hotel accommodation. And Alhamdulillah, Allah has given barka. Alhamdulillah. And we see that if you do it for sake of Allah, Allah gives you multiple times more by other means. So this is my request to most of the duas is that have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't demand what the organization give you. You can take it. But the moment you start demanding that our minimum so much I want, for a talk and that's the reason you find that most of the western organization when you go for dawa lectures they charge which is i don't think it is preferable or it is advisable to charge for people attending islamic lectures i remember the first time i went to canada i was shocked that I kept a ticket for my entry ten dollar ticket i said ten dollar for what so after that, I made the policy. When I accept an invitation, I say that you should not charge for the entry of the talk. Unless if it's a conference. And during a conference, because they're calling many speakers and they may not be able to generate funds. So during conferences, if they charge a fee for the entry, I don't object. But as far as the conferences we have done, mashallah, we have done 
by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the largest Islamic conference in the world. The largest Islamic English conference in the world. MashaAllah, more than a million people attending over a span of 10 days in terms of technology, in terms of expenses. It's the largest, MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, in these conferences, never ever have we charged a single penny for any of the lectures. And we find that Allah's barakah is there, that when we give it complimentary, Allah helps the organization in a bigger way. And by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we became the largest, mashallah, private organization in the world. You know, having more than 500 full-time paid employees. When in Bombay, mashallah, our organization and the sister concern had 500 full-time paid employees. And mashallah, we had more than 10,000 volunteers in Bombay alone. And in other parts, we had more employees and more volunteers. So I believe that money amongst the 10 important things, it is the least important, number 10. It's important, but in the top 10, it would come the last. Unfortunately, most of the Muslim organizations are so much bothered about the finances, how we're going to recover it. They're more bothered about recovering the money they spend. That is the reason the rich becomes minimal, audience becomes less, there's less barka. So I personally pr prefer that for the Islamic lecture, there should not be any charge. And surely amongst the Muslim ummah, there are various people who are big hearted, who are willing to give donation. And by that way, you are most welcome to do the lectures. But if someone does keep a minimal fee because they cannot get donations, I've got no objection, but should not be exorbitant. Now it has become a trend that people are giving workshops and they're charging a thousand dollars and two thousand dollars and few thousand dollars and because they're popular they're demanding money which I feel is not with the spirit of Islam and uh, Alhamdulillah a few years back there was an article written by Sheikh Haitham al Haddad and there was a beautiful article on how many of the Muslim dies you know are demanding money and they have made it a business it's a very good article so my my request is that have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah, He'll give you multiple times more. If you do for akhirah, Allah will give you akhirah and dunya also. If you do for dunya, you'll get dunya but not akhirah. So, in short, taking money for preaching Islam within limits is permissible. But mustab is not taking it all. If Allah has given you that ability, has given you uh, the wealth, it's preferable not to take. But if someone takes, as long as it is within the limits, it is permissible. But see to it that don't exploit the people and the organization. And inshallah, Allah will shower on you more blessings, inshallah. Hope that answers the question.